Hello, everybody, and welcome to Thursday's edition of Locked on Cardinals. We've got a series preview for you as the Cardinals are ready to battle the Buccos of Pittsburgh as the easy part of their schedule for the Cardinals really ends this weekend. What are the probables? What am I looking forward to? How can the Cardinals find success, and what will we learn from this series? All those questions and more will be answered on today's Locked on Cardinals. Locked On Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome back into the show. I am Lucas Smith, your host, and a very excited host today as we get to talk about a upcoming series with the Pittsburgh Pirates. We are brought to you today in part by Locked on MLB, hosted by baseball encyclopedia Paul Francis Sullivan, but be sure to call him Sully and listen to his show or watch his show on your favorite podcasting platform or on YouTube. Locked on Cardinals is also free and on all of your favorite platforms, including the Locked on Cardinals YouTube page. And if you're watching, much appreciated. Subscriber numbers continue to go up slowly and surely day by day. So much appreciated there. Uh, so if you want to, feel free to subscribe. It's all free. Drop a rating, drop a like, uh, tell your friends and family, share it. Much, much appreciated there. The Cardinals coming off a disappointing three and five homestand in which they lost three out of the eight games they played. And we really kind of didn't learn a whole lot other than the Cardinals might not be a playoff caliber team, especially with how they played against the Milwaukee Brewers specifically. However, they still find themselves somehow, thanks in part to the schedule working in their favor from the other teams, only three and a half games out of a playoff spot and only two and a half games separate them from the next closest team in the San Diego Padres. But the Cardinals, uh, the Cincinnati Reds, uh, rather, currently occupy at spot. Um, obviously has the first spot uh, up by 11 and a half games there. Nobody's touching them. And then Cincinnati, San Diego, St. Louis are the top three. Philadelphia also sits five games out um, just behind St. Louis. So somehow, miraculously, say what you will about the talent on this team. Say what you will about how they've played against playoff teams, and I will too. Don't worry about that. But somehow, they, they find themselves in the playoff race. And I talked about it a little bit on yesterday's post-game podcast, that there's a difference between being in the race and being a legit playoff contender. Right now, I don't think anybody's really saying the Cardinals are a legit playoff contender. They're definitely in the race. There, there's no question about it. Less than four games out, in the race. And c could make some noise. And when you get there, anything can happen. And it's going to be entertaining, at least for a little bit, while the Cardinals still sit within striking distance. And they have an opportunity this week against the Pittsburgh Pirates to really make some noise because the team above them, or the two teams above them, rather, um, don't have as easy as a schedule. The um, the card, or excuse me, the Reds are playing the Brewers, so that's a very tough game for them. And the Padres are playing the Dodgers. The Padres and Dodgers played a marathon of a game last night um, or early this morning, 12 hours ago, whatever it looks like um, when you're listening. So definitely the Cardinals have the easiest of those three teams. And the Cardinals have to take advantage. I mean, the, the, the schedule changes this weekend, obviously. Um, but, but nevertheless, for at least for the last couple of days, um, it, it's going to be in the Cardinals' favor for the Padres and Reds. Is this team a playoff team? Are we going to find that out? We'll see. And, and I misspoke. The Padres and uh, Reds have both have four-game sets with the Brewers and Dodgers, so I beg your pardon there. But the, the, the Cardinals have it the easiest. They're going to play the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yes, it's in PNC Park, but the Cardinals are 10-5 and five this season against Pittsburgh Pirates. Not a lot of success recently with the Pirates winning a couple series, but 10 and 5 is still a decent record against the team. Um, and you will finish out that portion of the NL Central schedule this weekend. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the preview of the series this weekend. We will start with game one. And that game one will feature, according to MLB.com, we've got Miles Michaelis going up against Mitch Keller. Mitch Keller had some pretty good success against the St. Louis Cardinals in his most recent timeout. That start yielding a five inning. Shutout performance with just one walk. He struck out six, did give up six hits in that start, uh, but definitely his best start in a long while. Um, he just hasn't had that great of a year. 
to be quite honest with you. He is 4-10 and with a 6-3-5 ERA and 16 starts. Just 66 and two-thirds of an inning in those 16 starts, so he's not going very deep in just 66 strikeouts as well. In fact, he's only gone above five innings one time, and that came back on May the 4th, May the 4th be with you, against the San Diego Padres. The Cardinals definitely were outperformed. I think I have the wrong graphic up on YouTube. Apologize, but be sure to follow the show on Twitter and Instagram. Um, the, the Cardinals will look to have better success against Mitch Keller tonight, but the, the big story that I'm looking at is Miles Michaelis. As he continues to look to make a step in the right direction. He gave up two unearned runs in his most recent start against these Pittsburgh Pirates, when in which he went five innings, gave up just two hits. He walked two, uh, hit a man. Get, uh, struck out five, and he was aided by some incredible, incredible defense by Harrison Bader. So can Michaelis take that next step, especially with Jack Flaherty being out for at least 10 days on the injured list? And I mentioned on yesterday's show that if he's going to be out for more than two weeks or three weeks, in my opinion, shut him down. Much easier said than done. I'm not the one that has to add the conversation with Jack, but I'm definitely of the state of mind that if they're not going to be in the playoff hunt, there's no reason to rush Flaherty back. Can Michaelis step up and be that arm? That's going to be big because Michael has had an exceptional 2018, a so-so to bad 2019, did not pitch last season, and has shown signs of, of success this season. Before he exited that Chicago start, he was pitching very well. Pitched pretty well his last start, obviously, like I mentioned, being aided by some defense and helpful defense, but everybody is aided except for, obviously, the air that caused a run to score by Harrison Bader. But if Michael can step up, and I'm not even saying Michaelis has to be on par with the level of production that Jack Flaherty might give you, because that's really a tall task to ask of anybody. But Michaelis needs to step up and pitch better than he has in the last two seasons, or his, his last two seasons, I guess I should say. Um, or No, in his last season, 2019, he did not pitch last year. So if he's able to stay healthy and, and be productive and give his team a chance to win, yes, that's a buzzword, but Michaelis needs to step up now more than ever. Flaherty is done for at least two weeks. He's going to miss two starts in my, you know, 10 days, two starts. Michaelis is going to need to step up because Flaherty can. And KK Kim also, I think, could be back into that starter's role, maybe Ponce de Leon. But Michaelis needs to be the guy that the Cardinals signed a four-year, 68, maybe $62 million contract extension with back in 2018. Bad contract, I get it. But it's time for Michaelis to, to live up to that. Uh, you know, does he have to go on a run like he did in 2018, winning 18 games, having an ERA below three? Maybe not. But he's got to have a respectable ERA, got to be able to go six, seven innings in a game and be successful, especially when you're facing the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pittsburgh Pirates, last place in the National League Central, nowhere close to a prolific offense. All due respect to that organization. But they're 46-81 and 81, uh, with a run differential of negative 189. That's not very good. So Mike needs to go out and dominate tonight. That, that's my thought process. Last time out, five earned run, five innings and zero to two earned runs were, were going to be successful. He completed that challenge. Nice job to Miles. Next step in the progression, dominate. Dominate. If you, you were signed to a four-year, 60-some-odd million dollar contract, pitch like it. He has, the, he has the ability to, but is he going to? That's the question. Uh, Michaelis needs to take that next step tonight for the Cardinals to be successful, especially with, I think, that the, the responsibility on Miles Michaelis got elevated once Flaherty left, uh, once Flaherty was put on the IL once again with the, uh, with the injury. With, with Flaherty gone, that's a huge blow to the rotation. We've already seen what happened last time Flaherty left the starting rotation and left the team. Cardinals went on a downward spiral, like that little spiral hand motion, downward spiral um, on in June. That can't happen anymore. There's not enough games left. There's just there, That's not, again, I'm not trying to re, uh, reinvent the wheel here with my with my analyst, but I'm just trying, or analysis, but I'm just trying to be truthful and kind of a, in, in, in a very cut forward way, Michaelis needs to step up and be better than he was in 2019, especially with Flaherty out. I think he can do it. Go out there, throw strikes, don't walk anybody, be successful. Michaelis has always had good control. Um, or when, when he's on, he's had exceptional control. Go out and do it. That's, that's my game one prediction, that, that he will go out and dominate. And the Cardinals also offensively need to have a better day than they did against Mitch Keller. I understand Mitch Keller only went five innings and he got him out of there early, a, he struck out six, but no earned runs. He didn't allow any earned runs. The Cardinals need to do better offensively against Mitch Keller tonight. And again, like I, I talked about this a while because I feel like with the amount of times the Cardinals are playing the same team, Royals, uh, Brewers will be coming up, and Pirates, 
they're facing very familiar foes in, on the mound and very familiar arms. That helps that, that, that me to me that that um, that that's an advantage to the offense. I mean, Chris Bubich was an example of that. They did not hit him well the first time after giving getting many opportunities. They killed him the second time around. Hopefully, that happens the same. Uh, coming up here with Mitch Keller. But it's time for my first break of the show. I'll come back with the previews for games two and three and four. Only a slight one for game four since uh, the probables aren't officially announced yet for St. Louis as of the time of this recording. Um, and then segment three, I'll kind of talk about what we can learn from this series, if anything. So all that coming up in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you guys about the best tasting protein bar on the market. And that is Built Bar. You have nine incredible flavors to choose from, and you are missing out if you haven't heard about them. Coconut, cherry marcia, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate. My mouth is literally watering just talking about them and thinking about them. This ad is my favorite because it gets me hungry and it gets me excited about Built Bars. If you don't know your favorite, order a mixed box. Get two of each of the nine flavors. My recommendation, double chocolate. Why is it called double chocolate? Because all these bars are already covered in chocolate, and that one's just got more chocolate. I love myself some chocolate, but just because all these bars are covered 100% in chocolate and they taste good, doesn't mean they're not healthy. All these bars have 17 to 18 grams of protein, calories ranging from 130 to 180, only 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. So what are you waiting for? Order today. Order right now on your phone or mobile or on your computer. Get the grass. Get the grass quick. Get the raspberry. Get the double chocolate. Get whatever you like. Get your favorite, or get yourself a mix box. You can't go wrong. Built Bar is also the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. Go to Built.com. Use promo code LOCKS15 for 15% off your order at Built.com. One more time, promo code LOCKS15 for 15% off your order at Built.com. Game two has a familiar uh, arm going for the St. Louis Cardinals in terms of having success against the Pittsburgh Pirates, and that would be J.A. Happ. Um, tonight, Friday, Saturday, all 6.05 Central start, 7.05 out on the East Coast. J.A. Happ versus Dylan Peters. Dylan Peters also saw success in his most recent start. That was against St. Louis Cardinals when he went five innings, give up just a walk, and struck up three. The Cardinals, again, will have another look at Dylan through four and two-thirds of an inning, two runs, one earned against the Milwaukee Brewers in his start before last on August the 15th. That was in PNC Park, so he's making his second start in Pittsburgh of the season. Peters is a lefty. J.A. Happ is a lefty. Going to have a fun time. Uh, Peters is a 28-year-old lefty, while J.A. Happ is a 30 year eight-year-old lefty. It's a little bit of a different in age there, but the key for Hap is fastball command and fastball and, and control that fastball. Jay Hap, let, let's just take a look at his starts against the Pittsburgh Pirates this season because they're pretty darn impressive. Um, when he was pitching for the Minnesota Twins, he pitched seven and a third innings of shutout baseball, one hit, three walks, and two walks and three strikeouts. Fast forward to August the 10th when he was a member of the St. Louis Cardinals. Six innings, one hit, one earned run, came on a home run, two walks, and five punch outs. And his most recent start, six innings, two earned, both coming on home runs, six hits, a walk, and eight punch outs. Is the third time going to be success for the Pirates? It might be. I've talked about very extensively the positives that can come from facing a pitcher over and over again, and the Pirates are going to have that opportunity. This is going to be the third time they're seeing him this month, the second time in over a week and a half. The second time in five days. or uh, Yeah, it be five days. Advantage offense? Probably. But I still think Hap can find success because or, no, this will be the fourth time they face him. I'm sorry. It's the third time as a Cardinal, but fourth time overall. So Hap will just look to repeat that success. And they, they talked about a lot on the broadcast in the last couple starts, and I totally agree with him. It's that fastball command. He's using his fastball more as a Cardinal than he was as a twin uh, here in 2021. And that, that seems to have breed success. And that is what Hap will be looking to duplicate against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Obviously, you got to change it up a little bit because you never know um, – you know, you, you got to change your game plan a little bit. You can't be too predictable. But at the same time, if something isn't totally broke, don't try and rework it and try something completely brand new. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm a believer in that mentality. Um, but nevertheless, Hap will look to not fix something that isn't broken and still find success against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And again, the Cardinals are going to have to try and find success against another starter that pitched well against them his most recent start. When, like I said, Peters had success going those five innings of shutout baseball or of one run baseball, excuse me, against the Cardinals. 
Cardinals seem to have a theme of getting shut down by pitchers that have no business shutting an offense down. Uh, Peters is obviously uh, is having a good year. He's going to make his third start on Friday night uh, of the season, but his, his career numbers are not there. Um, like I said, he is he is, he is age twenty eight, and for his major league baseball career in thirty three games, twenty six starts, a five five six ERA, a WHIP of one five nine, and one hundred and forty two and a third major league innings. Nothing too impressive there. Yet he dominated the Cardinals his most recent time out. Game three of this series has another dominating figure, Adam Wainwright. Only so many things one can say about Adam Wainwright before getting repetitive. I've probably already reached that point. He's got a 176 ERA in his last seven starts, according to MLB.com. He's 5-1 in those starts, 44 strikeouts and 51 innings. His most recent start came against these Pittsburgh Pirates on August 22nd. He threw eight shutout innings, giving up just two hits. Impressive, wonderful, magnificent, fantastic, dominating, unbelievable. Two of his last three starts against Pittsburgh have been eight or more innings of shutout baseball. He's given up one earned run against the Pittsburgh Pirates in 23 innings. Just absolutely domination. And the thing about it is, I talked about it all the time with Adam Wainwright, what makes him so impressive is not only that he's doing this at age 39, it's not only that he's been doing this for a long time, but it's that he hasn't really changed his game plan all too much. Yeah, he's not throwing mid-90s like he was maybe in 2013 or 14, so that he has had to change a little bit. But you know what you're going to get from Wainwright 30% of the time? And it's a hook. It's a curveball. It's one of the it's one of the game's best, present day and all time. I say it all the time. And I'm going to repeat myself some more. If he didn't lose those two and a half to three and a half seasons due to injury, I really do think we're looking at Adam Wainwright as more of a Cooperstown Hall of Famer because we're already looking at him as a Cardinal Hall of Famer as it is. With those couple of seasons lost, he already has shown that when healthy, he can be one of the game's best. He's doing it at age 39. He's in the top 10 in innings pitched, for crying out loud. His ERA is going to be the lowest since 2014, knock on wood, pending anything too bad happening and him shutting down a season or injury or whatever. Or getting blown up uh, the next or him giving up a lot of runs in the next month or so. But I don't see it happening. He has just been so good for the entire season, had a couple blow-up starts early, had a couple of so-so starts in the middle of the season, but by and large, this man produces, this man has solid production, this man gets outs at a high level, and I'll say the buzz phrase again, gives his team a chance to win time and time again. That's all you can ask for from any pitcher ever, and he does that exceptionally well because he is one of the game's best. He's at bare minimum the best pitcher currently on the roster, best starting pitcher currently on the roster for the St. Louis Cardinals. Go ahead, try and prove me wrong. J.A. Happ, respect, Wainwright's better. John Lester, respect, Wainwright's better. Michaelis, prove it. Get healthy, prove it. I'm not saying Wainwright has the best stuff. I'm not even saying saying Wainwright has the best overall stuff on the starting rotation. But he's producing the best. He's been the ace all season long. It's unbelievable what, what this man is doing. There's so many stats to back it up. There's so many superlatives to back it up. He's had a very decorated career. And, you know, I, I was saying earlier that maybe he shouldn't be a Cy Young contender, maybe not that good. Maybe he should be. 310 ERA, 25 starts, three complete games, got a shutout in there, on pace to be in the top um, and be near the top of the NL in terms of innings pitched. Maybe he's going to force himself into that Cy Young contention. Who knows? Bare minimum, spoiler alert, he's going to be the Cy Young for the St. Louis Cardinals this season when I do my award show in the offseason. There's no reason, there, there has been nothing shown to me that I have seen to say, oh, okay, when I saw on a downward tilt, he's not going to dominate. If there has been, if you've seen something, let me know. Wainwright has been so phenomenal. It is a testament to him as an athlete, as a person, as a teammate. Just absolutely remarkable. If the Cardinals win one game in this series, I have a very good feeling it's going to be that game on Saturday night at 6.05 in PNC Park. That's how confident I am in Adam Wainwright. I really am. I mean, give him some run support. He's probably got 15, 16 wins. And again, I know runs 
or wins don't mean everything in today's Major League Baseball. But I truly believe that. Who's he facing? Talked a lot about Wainwright. He's facing Stephen Brault. Stephen Brault that got a really cool tattoo down both of his arms. Um, faced the Cardinals twice this year. Back on the August 10th, uh, twice this month. Uh, five innings pitched, two earned his most recent timeout. Four innings pitched, one earned run. So not a lot of innings pitched, but also not a lot of earned runs. Offense is going to have to try and change that. They're going to have to try and change that against Keller. They're going to try and change that against Peters. They're going to have to try and change that now against Brault as well. And even they're going to have to try and find success in game four against uh, Will Crow. So no, according to LB.com, there has been no um, probable starter announced for the St. Louis Cardinals for the afternoon game on Sunday. It's um, one of three games starting at that time at 12.05 Central. They're going to be facing off, however, against Will Crow. That has been announced. Um, and Will Crow has had some experience against the Cardinals this season. And it goes like this. On May 2nd, he gave up three earned runs, one home run in five innings. Fast forward to June 25th, he gave up four earned runs on two homers in five innings. And most recently, four and two-thirds, but just one earned run, uh, walking three and striking out four. So the Cardinals are going to have to find more success or uh, continue the success early and find more success than he did late. I know that these guys aren't going very deep in games. I know that. But they're not giving up many runs either. So Cardinals need to find a way to find a lot more success against these uh, Pirate starters, excuse me. And starting pitching-wise, it's all going to be build off of the last start. Hap can build off of his last start. Michaelis can and Wainwright can as well. For, for, for Wainwright, it's just continuing to dominate. I, I spent a lot more time today talking about Adam Wainwright than I wanted to. That's how excited I get about Adam Wainwright. He is a phenomenal, phenomenal example that age is just a number, that you can go out and compete. And he does it every fifth day. He's missed one start this season, maybe two, but I think it was just one when he was uh, that close contact due to COVID. Just unbelievable what this man is doing at 39, close to 40 years old. He's turning 40 in a handful of days. Incredible. Incredible stuff for Adam Winnett. So that's going to do it for segment two. This series as a whole, it's against the Pittsburgh Pirates. It, it's late in the season. What, what can we learn from this series, if anything, is the question I'm going to be answering in segment number three. Is it the Cardinals can play off or the only teams they're chasing are playing better teams and will be losing to those teams? I'll talk about that in segment number three. But first, it's that time of year again. Eyes are turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron for the start of the football season. And as always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. Get the updated odds, promos, and contests, including two incredible promos coming at you. The online's biggest half-million-dollar mega NFL, NFL contest and the world's largest $200,000 NFL Survivor Contest. Open now at Bet Online. Head to the website, betonline.ag, or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive a 100% welcome bonus. No longer 50, it's 100. That promo code is locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D. You want another promo code? Take advantage of their opening day super promo, which is making a bet on the Thursday, September 9th season opener between the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your wager will be refunded for $25 for new customers only when signing up with the promo code NFL100. Promo codes galore, deals galore. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports from football, baseball, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Las Vegas casino games. Don't wait and take advantage of all the great offers available for this season. Bet online, your online sports book experts. Also, want to tell you guys this episode is brought to you in part by Rock Auto. With the ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts from their computer? You have access to Rock Auto on your computer at home, or at all times in your pocket. You can save time and money when using Rock Auto, and they're a family business serving auto parts customers for over 20 years. Their prices are always reliably low for each and every customer, and they have everything you could possibly need, from baked parts to tan lamps to motor oil and even new carpet. Go explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solution to your auto part needs. That's rockauto.com. Head there right now and see all the parts available. And be sure to write locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably below prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. So to finish up, I got a question 
Um, what can we learn from this series? Um, the Like I mentioned, the two teams that the Cardinals are, are chasing, the Padres and the Reds, are both playing playoff teams. Reds are playing the Brewers. Padres are playing the Dodgers. So if everything goes perfectly well, and let's say the Brewers do their job and sweep the Reds, and the Padres, uh, the, the Dodgers do their job and sweep the Padres, th- there is a scenario here where the Cardinals find themselves in a wild card spot at the end of the weekend. I don't think anybody would have expected that in June. But nevertheless, how realistic is that? Cardinals would have to sweep. The Brewers would have to sweep as well. That's the nature of the game right now, that every game is a must win for the St. Louis Cardinals. Every single one, especially against teams like the Pirates. Got to take advantage of this because their their schedule in September is scary. Uh, they're, they're, They're at Cincinnati next week, and they travel to Milwaukee. The Dodgers come into town for Albert's return again. Then they have Cincinnati at home. They're at the Mets, who have fallen out of playoff contention a little bit. Padres come home, and they go to Milwaukee, a four-game set at Chicago, and then three at home against Milwaukee. That's not an easy schedule. So I'm not going to be super wishy-washy on this. In my opinion, my thoughts on this weekend, even if they play well and everything falls into place and they find themselves in a playoff spot, Because of how the Cardinals have performed against teams above 500, and that is a 21 and 34 mark according to MLB.com, and because of who their opponents are are, are playing this weekend, their their chasers are playing, and because of who the Cardinals are playing, I'm going to do my best, and I might fail this, to not get overhyped about a series win this weekend. I'm not going to be a hater. I will recognize positives. But at the same time, this team needs to prove it against teams above 500. And they're going to get every opportunity in the world to do that next month. So in my opinion, what we're going to learn this weekend isn't a whole lot. Even if they take three out of four. Even if they sweep. And a road sweep is never easy to do. A road sweep in a four-game series is never easy to do. So if they do that, absolutely. Credit to them. Great job. Yes. Sweeping the Pirates does not make you a playoff team. We will learn more, in my opinion, we're going in this series against Cincinnati Reds than we will no matter what happens this weekend. I hope they sweep. I hope they take three to four. I hope that they have a successful weekend. Absolutely. Obviously. We also have to keep in mind that the Cardinals have have tricked, they've at least tricked me a couple times in thinking they're in contention by beating up on bad teams. So this weekend, take care of business. Win your series. Don't worry about what other teams do. As you know, just take, take take care of business, beat the Pittsburgh Pirates. And then let's learn something next week when they play the Cincinnati Reds. Disagree with that? Agree with that? I want to know. Follow me on Twitter at LJ Fastball. Um, to, you, can, you can DM me there your thoughts on what I just said about this how this weekend series, I don't think we're going to learn a whole lot. Um, or you can also follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at LO underscore Cardinals to let me know your thoughts there, or email the show anytime at lockedoncards at gmail.com. Winnable series, absolutely, between the arms that the Cardinals have going and the opponent themselves and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Cardinals have a winnable series this weekend. Time to take care of business. Uh, next show will come out on Friday. It'll be a recap of tonight's game. Hopefully it is a winner as Miles Michaelis, hopefully he uh, dominates as well and is able to take the next step forward in his continued development um, and t- getting back to 100% as well. So until I talk to you guys next time, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcasting platform or on YouTube, all free, free and available on all um, podcasting and YouTube platforms. Be sure to also look in to Locked on Bets as well. Drop a rating on all these wonderful Locked On podcast shows. And until I talk to you next time, be sure to stay safe, stay well, and have a fantastic day.